The impossible has happened. Hell is frozen over, and Brett Favre is still crying. I guess that means the Saints have won the Super Bowl. Now it's the offseason and diehards don't know what to do. Every offseason since 67, diehards have been saying the same thing. Well, there's always next year. Then they start assembling wish lists for first rounders that they'd like to pick up. I've had a hard time getting excited about this draft because who really cares about the 32nd best player? I mean, hell, it's only one pick away from being in the second round. Not that I'm an expert on draft picks. I'm hit or miss at best. I loved when Bush fell into our hands. Hated when we picked Meacham. I wanted Chris Houston from Arkansas. Turns out that wouldn't have been a good idea. Cedric Ellis was my number two behind Glenn Dorsey. Turns out I had that one backwards too. Last year I didn't want anyone from Ohio State, Beanie Wells or Malcolm Jenkins. I wanted Clay Matthews Jr. Experts said he was only good at USC because of Cushing and Mayaluga. I argued that his father is a Hall of Famer and he showed the skills to become an elite linebacker as well. Turns out I was right. Late round kicker decisions were just as inaccurate. I hated when we picked place kicker Taylor Melhoff year before last and was thinking the trade up to pick a punter in the fifth round was a bad decision as well. I was right about the place kicker, but an onside kick in the Super Bowl made me realize I was wrong about Thomas Morstead. But more than anything, my lack of interest in the draft mainly stems from Loomis's and Peyton's ability to find undrafted free agent gems. Here's a short list from the 2010 Super Bowl team. Pierre Thomas, Mike Bell, Garrett Hartley, Lance Moore, Lionel Hamilton, and Courtney Roby. Just those guys alone racked up 135 points this season. And that's the thing about this team. It's made up mostly of misfits and unwanted people. Scott Shanley and Scott Fujita came over from Dallas with Peyton. Neither were starters. San Diego's first round draft pick of quarterback Phillip Rivers after Drew Brees' shoulder injury was as big a slap to the face to Brees as Oprah trying to wipe off his birthmark. Wow, 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 woo! All right, who just kissed you? There's a big old What's kiss that? right there. <laughs> it's okay though. Now, Brees' is my dome boy. Jonathan Vilma was a standout early for the Jets, earning Defensive Rookie of the Year honors. Where the team didn't feel he made the conversion to the 3-4 defense, he dropped from 169 tackles to 114. 114? That's a dozen more than any of our linebackers had before he got here. Jabari Greer was let go in favor of Terrell Owens by Buffalo. Fans were pissed and probably because they thought they were getting Isaac Hayes. Anthony Hargrove was suspended from football all of last year. He came back and got his life straight, but no one wanted to give him a second chance. New Orleans did, and his teammates say he's the first to practice and the last to leave. Even a guy highly sought after like Bush has been considered a bust by most, and in other systems, he probably would have been let go by now. Darren Sharper was told he was too old to play football anymore. He must have forgotten to turn on his hearing aid. Unlike last year, this season's free agency has been nearly absent outside of losing players. Scott Fujita went to the Browns and who could blame him? $14 million over three years for a 35-year-old linebacker who not long ago wasn't even a starter. Any one of us would have taken that deal. And it's hard not to like the guy even in leaving. He donated $25,000 to Coastal Restoration before he left. Mike Bell was a restricted free agent this year, which means if another team makes an offer, the Saints have a week to make a decision on whether they're going to match it or not. It's no surprise the Saints didn't match the Eagles offer for Bell. A bunch of fans were upset about losing Bell, but it was his own fault. If he had just worn the right shoes, he might still be here. What kind of shoes you got on? Yeah, that figures. Put on the cleats. Charles Grant was let go after lack of production and an absorbent price tag. And I couldn't care less. How did that guy get in trouble for taking diet pills anyway? Some saw these losses as preparation for moves in free agency, but the moves never happened. Players like Julius Peppers came and went, and fans accused New Orleans of just sitting on their hands, like they were satisfied with just one championship. In sitting on their hands, or as I like to call it, patience, their brilliance shone through. 
Peppers was picked up by the Bears for $40 million over six years. Julius Peppers is a great player when he plays at 100%, but he only does that about one down a game. The Bears had a player in Alex Brown who played 100% every down of the game. But to make room for Julius Peppers' price tag, they had to let Alex Brown go. And that's when the Saints pounced. Brown is a 6'3", 260-pound lineman with a total of 481 tackles, 289 of which solo, with 32 and a half sacks, 5 interceptions, 16 forced fumbles, and 11 fumble recoveries in his 8-year career. Brown is most remembered for his outstanding game as a Gator versus the Vols in 99. He had 5 sacks and an interception in that game. Getting a little dental work taken care of. He has wreaked havoc with that offensive line. Martin pursued by Brown. Alex Brown catches him from behind. Alex Brown not to be denied. That is his third sack of the game. That presses 405 pounds. Brown again beats his man. Back-to-back -back sacks by number 13. What a game for Alex Brown. And he is phenomenal. And I tell you what he's doing. And that was not in their game plan coming into the swamp, I guarantee you. Here's the 35th pass. If he can get it away. And Alex Brown says no way. There it is. To go to Wilson. And Alexander's in a foot race with him, but the ball is batted down back at the line. And look who is there to do the batting. Well, Alex Brown has had a career here tonight. Tennessee cannot block Alex Brown. Before Brown was picked up, most felt like we were going to lock up a defensive end in this draft and we still might go defensive end in the first round because of the depth in this year's draft. But look for Brown to start opposite of Will Smith this coming season. That still leaves holes at linebacker and running back, you might think. Well, you'd be wrong. Don't forget about last year's loss in picks at linebacker, Stanley Arano from Wake Forest. Head coach Jim Grobe was quoted as saying, he's as good or better than Aaron Curry. Curry, Arano's teammate, was picked fourth overall in the draft. As far as running backs go, we have more than we can even use. Of course there's PT and Bush, but don't forget about Hamilton who's a solid back and also a great special teamer. And with practice squad guys waiting in the wings like PJ Hill from Wisconsin and Herb Donaldson from Western Illinois. Donaldson led the entire NCAA with 1,784 yards rushing and 4,746 yards rushing in a three-year career. New Orleans backfield looks bright for the future. As far as I can see, the only hole left is a big, fat, run-stuffing defensive tackle like Monroe's own Pat Williams. New Orleans needs a big boy in the middle. Let's just hope our number one pick doesn't go to a Jonathan Sullivan, Walter Thomas type. Like a Terrence Cody.